So let's get started with our very first that is mutating admission controller. Okay. Now, whenever we uh, refer to the term like mutating, what does it really mean? It basically refers to our ability to modify and change the attribute of the resources being created or updated in the cluster. What this means is um, that uh, this mutating word simply means that it, it allows you to have the capability to modify or change some of the key properties which are associated when you create the objects. Now, what kind of objects we are talking about when we um, uh, say that you can modify them? So basically, it's like uh, if suppose you have to create some pods, you can have a transformation in them. OK, this is what mutating admission controller supports. Like if we, we can we have an example here, like uh, your namespace lifecycle. So basically what it does is it can enforce that only specific service accounts can create the pods inside the namespace. Now, why this kind of admission controller is required? So suppose uh, you create a namespace and you want that a certain application uh, related pods can only be run inside it, then you wa want to limit it, right? You don't want that other uh, applications or other environments are also going inside and then creating inside the same namespace creating. Uh, uh, this is this will uh, be hard to administer, right? Not a good practice to follow. So in this case, we can limit down to the service accounts, and then we can make sure that a particular service account is being getting used to map to that namespace. This is particularly useful for differentiating between your non-prod and the prod environment kind of setups. So uh, because uh, those will be having the service accounts which are rela related to the particular AWS account, so you can use the, those kind of namespace lifecycle. Then there are uh, limit rangers, that is also an admission controller in which you enforce the limit of minimum and maximum constraint that can be applied on the resource like CPU and memory. What this means is that it uh, you, know, you can configure how much CPU or how much memory uh, can be uh, applied to a pod. Now this pod, what, what it can do is, suppose I say that um, uh, I want that always the port should have one GB of at least memory, right? So it can modify the request and uh, then it can enforce this kind of policy so that whenever you are going to deploy the port, then it will always have minimum of one core or one, one GB memory like that if our policy enforces it. Now, how this is beneficial? Normally, you would see that when you are deploying the ports, uh, initially those uh, when uh, they don't get much requests, then even the lower memory will work. But uh, when you go into the production and the request comes, then you will find that it frequently goes out of memory. So these kind of issues can be solved. Then next is chained by nodes by condition. So Again, taint node by conditions such as um, your disk space or network issue. So you can taint uh, the nodes and then uh, only the pods which are having the toleration for that taint will be deployed. So this is uh, particularly useful uh, if you want to skip the pods on some uh, particular disk space or network uh, type of issues. So you can actually put the admission controller uh, in that. The taint nodes by condition is an example of mutating admission controller. So what this, this means is, that if I'm going to taint the node by condition, then actually it is in the background, in the Kubernetes, it is using mutating admission controller for enforcing this taint node nodes by condition. And similarly is always pull images, okay? So, uh, uh, so whenever we are going to deploy the pod, we need to make sure that all the pods have the required images uh, which should be pulled before they start. Now, why this is important? So, uh, suppose uh, you have updated, right? So, uh, if you do not do this by default, if it already finds the image, it can use that. But then, if you have made some changes, it might not be running the latest version of the image. That's why uh, we can pass the policy like always pull images. Then it will ensure that always the image are getting pulled before the pod gets started. Then you can ensure that always the latest version of the image is getting uh, deployed. Now this is the where again uh, it's going to mutate the request to pull. So again it will be calling the mutating admission controller. So these are some of the example of the mutating admission controller. Basically it, it helps in modification of the resource of uh, because uh, the original request might not be the way that you have uh, made uh, but it is actually modifying and doing certain changes due to which it, it is referred to as the mutating admission controller.